Welcome back to part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'd advise doing so first. Arwen can sail herself. Um, if you set her up and balance the sails correctly, um, and you set the tiller tamer, um, she will quite happily sail herself while you're sort of doing other things. So down here is a tiller lock. And cleat her off. Balance the sails. And she will quite happily sail herself as long as of course you're not moving around the boat because the trim will alter so but she's pretty good it's great when you're sailing along the coast um, and you want to get a bite to eat or something like that I haven't got a plan for the day I thought I would just literally pottle up and down um, and just enjoy myself, have a bit of fun. You can see there that I've got um, topping lift come lazy jacks and they unclip each side so that you could actually move the boom uh, out of the way if you want. Um, or you could just then rest it down onto a boom crutch so it forms a boom tent, uh, which is how I do it. And then up at the top there, uh, there's one or two adjustable tying on points. Um, it's a simple arrangement. And I still haven't got rid of the crease at the sail. Don't know why, it always, always ends up there but she sails fine. Spars and masts are sound, but would benefit from another top coat of wood skin varnish after next season. The main mast is of a bird's foot construction. It's hollow, easy to lift and insert into the mast box below the deck. The mast originally had a bronze mast ring um, that sat on a lip. It restricted the yard and so I removed it for the current setup, which is far more effective. Although the mast shows some staining, it's solid, strong and rot free. The mizzen mast was given to me and it was already epoxy coated. Apart from the odd scratches and dings, it's sound. Arwen's rigged as a standing lug yawl, and this gives a good variety of sail plan options depending on the weather conditions. All three sails, all three with a reefed main, jib and mizzen alone, main alone, or with reefs. There's a pair of oars. Uh, they're slightly on the short side. Um, I've never found the Navigator Rose for long distances. She isn't designed for that. Um, but for a short distance to get you off a pontoon or, th or onto a pontoon, that's absolutely fine. She'll do that. Um, I've also got a longer pair of oars um, and I was going to set her up 
to row her forward standing and rowing her so I was facing forward but I just never got around to that but you know whoever buys her can have those oars and if they want to uh, set her up for that um, brilliant um, she'll be clean but she does need some TLC um, the cockpit I repainted a couple of years ago um, so that's generally okay but her combings they do need a bit of work on <coughs> um, they're varnished and I haven't varnished them in donkey's years so um, they're, they're okay There's, the varnish is holding but it's looking a bit shabby so uh, they could do with a bit of a clean up and, and a varnish her hull underneath is absolutely fine um, I've touched her up in one or two places uh, in 15 years I've never painted the hull but then she's never ever gone through to past the actual primer level there's been odd scrapes and then I've sanded them back and just touched them up um, there's 10 coats of paint on her hull um, some old guys had some aluminium primer paint of all things left over and once we'd epoxied the base and fiberglass the base I put that on then three coats of normal primer then four coats of top coat and it's been bomb proof uh, it needs a bit of a clean but it's it's pretty good as is all the deck but she does need a little bit of TLC in places so uh, if you want to go sailing you can if you want a winter project to uh, sort of do then absolutely all deck cleats are screwed and secured, but the stern cleats would benefit from being bolted with backing plates instead. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. They are secure with very long bronze screws into the gunnel below. There are scratches in odd places that need touching up, but the decks are sound. Originally following the plans, I've changed the way that the mast rigging passes through the deck, so the black holes and the black cleats are now mainly redundant. The cleats are, however, useful for securing the mast during towing. One or two deck cleats are redundant and they could be removed. When at anchor, the foredeck is a great seating area from which to view a sunset or to just watch the nautical and natural world pass by. This cleat is showing a bit of wear and tear and I would remove it. Um, I rarely use it anyway. Arwen comes with a long-handled wooden paddle which straps to the foredeck. Very useful when really creek crawling. The deck cleats are either ash, oak or mahogany. These clips are for a telescopic mooring pole. Leather strips protect the rear combing from the occasional mainsheet block rubbing on it. 
similarly from the vibrating tiller arm of the outboard engine. The transom bracket is homemade and it works well. The stainless steel bolts are still strong, but over 15 years the washers have rusted, causing staining on the hull. There is a transom reboarding step and I have subsequently removed a portable transducer when I used to fish on Arwen. beautiful day. I'm just watching these youngsters going out. I don't think we'll be getting to the breakwater. I'm quite happy pottering around here. <laughs> yeah, maybe another day. <laughs> All the rubbing strakes are mahogany. Stained, gouged, they show 15 years of battle scars, a sign of a well-used boat, and a few encounters with pontoons, quaysides, rocks, and yes, even rogue branches of floating trees. Treated in Burgess Marine Sealer every four years or so, and in the case of the lower ones, originally epoxy coated. I don't know what I was thinking at the time when I put, did that. They do need some TLC, uh, some sanding back and resealing. Stainless steel hooks under the lower rubbing strip secure the outer edges of the tarp boom tent. When going to windward, Arwen points about 60 degrees off the wind. Trimmed correctly, she'll make six knots in a good breeze. Under more skillful skippering than mine, she'll do better on both windward performance and speed. Downwind, she behaves impeccably. Well, it's not my last voyage in Arwen. I've probably got two more trips left in her. 
Uh, one, I've promised a friend just down the road to take him sailing, so we'll sort that out over the next week or two. And then I've promised I'll take my son-in-law out for short sail as well. Um, family tradition, then all the family have been in the boat. Uh, and then um, that will be it. I might just fit one more in before the end of the season. And then I'm away for a bit and then she'll be ready to sell for someone to take her over winter and pretty her up and do whatever they wish with her ready for the sailing season. Won't be my last time on Plymouth Sound. Um, uh, I expect there'll be more of that another time. But for now, just enjoying, well, Arwen sailing herself basically. I'm doing nothing today. It's lovely. Light winds and beautiful scenery. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about uh, the Navigator design, uh, there's plenty on the internet um, and there's several good blogs. Um, Joel Bergen's blog is really good. All right, everything you want to know about navigators is on there. Um, and then there are lots of some really good videos out there about navigators by uh, the two Matts and Tim and Joel, um, Richard Smith's videos, which really show what a navigator is really capable of. I mean, he was racing his. Arwen is plywood construction. She's got a fiberglass bottom. She's 14 and a half feet long. And then uh, she's got the bowsprit and the boomkin, obviously. All right. Uh, she sits on a trailer and um, as you can see from the start of the video, she just rolls off with one or two pushes and um, comes back on just as easily as well. She has uh, served me well um, over the 15 years um, and she's still as sound. There's the odd dent and dink in her, which um, I've filled over the years, occasional encounters with rocks, things like that. So she, she has got a few battle scars, um, but she is seaworthy, all right? And she comes with all the gear for writing her. The last time I capsized her was about four years ago and she floated okay, but I'm gonna be honest, I can't guarantee after since then that the, um, all the hatches will hold. Um, but she's got writing lines, she's got reboarding loops um, and things like that as well. So getting in and out of her, if you find my videos about me uh, going swimming off her, you'll see how easy she is to reboard. Most of the hull bottom paintwork is sound, however there are a lot of scratches, worn patches and some flaking paint where I've done previous touch-ups. Never has the epoxy fiberglass protection been broken and as far as I can tell there is no evidence of damp anywhere.
there is considerable rust staining on the bottom hull from the transom outboard bracket uh, old washers along with some patches of flaking paint where her old trailer rollers caused paint damage on the lower chines. The bottom of the centreboard case needs sanding and recoating, as does the edge of the centreboard. But again, as far as I can see, the protective fibreglass epoxy layer remains undamaged even though there is some staining. I last painted the centreboard case and the actual centreboard about three years ago. Well, I've just seen a huge tailfin or porpoise, absolutely massive. He came right out of the water and he's somewhere just in front of us. Oh my word, that was, that was impressive. <laughs> now I know I have a reputation of saying in videos, oh, there was one just near me, but that one was absolutely colossal size. Monster thing. I'm keeping an eye out for a dorsal. <laughs> Well, I can hear the blow, but I can't see it. So unless I'm looking in the wrong area. Just heard it again. Like a rather loud, wheezy sneeze. Oh, they're so frustrating, aren't they? On the very first day I launched our went into Plymouth Sound, we had dolphins come alongside her. You'll see it in one of my very first... Ah, there was the blow. In one of my very first videos. She's just between me and that big ship. They're heading out to sea. I can just make them out. And it'd be nice to um, end with Arwen and a pod of dolphins again. Um, always great fun. I think they're swimming back out to sea. I can't see them heard them. Oh well. Always the way, isn't it? Always the way. Never mind. That was a nice thing to see. Okay, I think it's time probably to head back in. It's clouding over a bit and um, I want to take some photos of her and things like that so We'll let the ferry clear and then we'll um, head back in. <laughs>